Hello there, I'm Chrissy. This is my YouTube channel, Chrissy Love, where I review fragrance. This is my little house in my little corner of my little fragrance world, and I'm so glad that you're here joining me. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing. I post here twice a week, so there's a lot of action, a lot going around this house here, and I am also posting to TikTok and Instagram very regularly with particularly scent of the day contents, so my little one minute videos showing you my house and showing you what I'm wearing. And this is a very fun video I have thoroughly enjoyed preparing for because I am reviewing nine cotton candy inspired perfumes. Cotton candy is a note that's come about in a lot of popular perfumes. People are just loving the gourmands right now, including myself. I think people of all ages and genders can appreciate some sweet candiness in their life. So let's jump right into my review of nine cotton candy inspired perfumes in my collection. So no discussion of cotton candy perfume could be complete without pink sugar, which came out in 2004 and since then has been the epitome of sweet, syrupy, sugary cotton candy perfumes. And so I am grouping my perfumes into pink sugar land and not pink sugar land. Because <laughs> a lot of perfumes have been either duping it or just kind of, you know, eaten around it for a while. Now top notes on pink sugar are raspberry orange, fig leaf, and bergamot. Middle notes are cotton candy, licorice, red berries, strawberry, and lily of the valley. And base notes are caramel, vanilla, musk, tonka bean, and sandalwood. And say what you will about pink sugar, but it is decadent. It is satisfying, tooth achy. It is real deal pink cotton candy with those sweet strawberry notes. The licorice is really strong, which some people don't enjoy, but on my skin, it really does come out but it's berry-like, it's cotton candy, it's vanillic. It has caramel and the caramel is definitely there and plays a huge role, but it doesn't come off as being caramel forward. It's more like the smooth, creamy texture and syrupiness that comes out from it. Um, musk and tonka bean, those are usually sophisticated kind of scents. And this is not sophisticated. This is youthful and super syrupy. I think like what makes pink sugar what it is and so tooth achingly satisfying is that syrupy like being drenched in like melted cotton candy note. <laughs> mm. So you have been warned. If you have not tried pink sugar yet, you really should just to know what it is because it is truly prolific. So we'll start with our little pink sugar mist here. I'll also add that pink sugar has absolute beast mode performance. It's incredible. And staying within the pink sugar family, I have pink sugar berry blast, which I did a full review on like a flash review. So I'll link to that below. But basically the top notes are blueberry, blackberry, orange, and bergamot. The middle notes are cotton candy, of course, cherry, wild strawberry, and cork. And base notes are vanilla, caramel, tonka bean, cedar, and moss. And Pink Sugar Berry Blast smells almost more youthful, or should I say, just not as high of quality as Pink Sugar. It smells like Blueberry Pez. It's kind of chalky, it's overly sweet. It's basically Pink Sugar with a blueberry lean. So it kind of reminds me of like kids candy, like it kind of like chalky Pez candy. Yeah, so like it's not quite as satisfying to me as Pink Sugar. Um, if you like blueberry in your cotton candy, I got one coming for you later on, but that is Pink Sugar Berry Blast. And I also want to give an honorable mention to Pink Sugar Creamy Sunshine, which I've also done a full review of, so I'll link that below. And that's like a kind of like citrusy, kind of like fruit juicy version of Pink Sugar. Um, I actually really like that one the least. Uh, it has like coconut in it. It's It's supposed to be like you know, a, a coconut version of pink sugar. But to me, it's like even more synthetic and just like not even in like a good way, not in a satisfying way. Anyway, I don't have it, so I'm not gonna review it fully right now. I don't even have it on me. I sold it, I let it go. But I'll link the, the full review to that below so that you can check that out if you want to. But that concludes our actual pink sugars. Now let's move on to our faux pink sugars. Next I have Love's Sugar Kiss. And this is definitely vintage, came out in 2007. It's actually a little bit hard to find these days. So it's definitely not a dupe of pink sugar. It just smells really similar. So that's why I'm lumping it into this category. Now the notes on this are sugar, vanilla, caramel, musk, and jasmine. And it smells like a more caramel forward version of pink sugar. It's still syrupy. 
It is very creamy. It has really rich caramel and vanilla in it. And it has that cotton candy sponge sugar note in it as well, but it's like a caramel sponge sugar. Mm, performance is also beast mode. So this will last on you and your clothes all day into the next day. It's gorgeous. I'm really loving it. I'm sad I only have a small little bottle of it. Mm. Yeah, it's so sweet and just decadent and that's all it is. It's just straight up sugary gourmand deliciousness. But I love that it has more caramel in it than pink sugar does and also doesn't have that licorice. So that makes me very happy. So that is Love's Sugar Kiss. This one really piqued my interest when it just came out this year, and that is Truly's Unicorn Fruit Eau de Parfum. And this is based off of their body butter. So though this came out in 2021, the body butter has been around for, I believe, a few years at this point. But it smells a lot, like a lot, like pink sugar. Now the top notes are blackcurrant, citruses, and acai berry. The male notes are matcha tea, white flowers, and rose. And the base notes are cotton candy, vanilla, and sandalwood. And on first spray, this smells just like gummy bears, cotton candy, and a dusty milk chocolate. I seriously clearly get milk chocolate, which is not a note at all. So I don't know what that is, but in the dry down that goes away. And honestly, it's just like a not as good version of pink sugar. It smells like a scented doll, like a little bit cheap, like sweet, but in a really unsatisfying way. I think it lacks that syrupiness that pink sugar has. That's really satisfying. But it's definitely youthful and candy-like. Performance is awesome. It does last all day. But it's just like, it's a bit too close to pink sugar, but not hitting the mark and with a little bit less quality. So it doesn't make much sense to me. But the bottle is really adorable. Like this little pink cap. And uh, yeah, it just gets me. The bottle just gets me. But yeah, I'm sure the body butter is decadent and delicious. And I bet layering that with this or with pink sugar is a really nice experience. But yeah, Unicorn Fruit is probably leaving my collection soon. Although it is, it's a really fun cotton candy perfume. And if you like the body butter, I think it's worth giving it a try. So that is truly Unicorn Fruit. The final chapter in my Pink Sugar Saga is Al Rehab's Soft. And my bottle has kind of worn away. It's actually a fragrance oil. And so when the oil gets on the bottle, it kind of wears away the label, which I don't know if that's a good sign or not for my skin, but that's okay. So the notes in this are caramel, citruses, vanilla, white musk, orchid, vetiver, jasmine, and woody notes. And the last half of those are just not there. This is very, very close to pink sugar, but it kind of smells more sparkly, I want to say. <laughs> that's the citruses add some zest that like kind of tingles your nose a little bit. So when I first put this on my skin, I swear I get cotton candy flavored starburst. It's got that kind of zing to it. So it has a slight tartness. And in the dry down, it's like that sparkly pink cotton candy. It's like very satisfying and decadent. It is a rich, full scent, but it's still bright and has some levity to it. And it's playful. It's just playful. It's just like the color pink. That's what this is. It really is. It's not super soft, as they say per se. It's, if it's soft, it's like a big pink blanket, but the performance is beast mode. It lasts so long. I, I have heard the spray is also really good at lasting, but the oil certainly is. It, it really projects, really, really projects. Wherever you put it, you will pick it up all day. It will overpower any lotion you have, any other perfume you have on, trust me from experience, it overpowers everything. Mm. And it's just so good. It's so good. It's like one of those smells like makes you want to come back and keep smelling your bottle throughout the day. You like can't get enough of it. It is divine. So that is I'll Rehab Soft. I have four more cotton candy perfumes to show you and they are not pink sugar dupes in any form. So get excited. So the next one I have here is Dua's Cotton Candy de Dua, which came out this year, 2021. It's an original formulation for them. It has notes of vanilla, cotton candy, white musk, and sponge sugar. And when I first spray this on my skin, it kind of has this like Pepto-Bismol type scent to it. It's kind of like synthetic sweetness. It's definitely candy-like. It's obviously sweet with those notes. Um, but the dry down is really lovely. It's like a caramelic cotton candy. It's super creamy, but it has this touch of levity. It's kind of hard to explain. Mm, it's not syrupy, but it's still really satisfying. It, it's, it's like fresh pink cotton candy, freshly made, going right in your mouth, right? You know, your, your senses are just absorbing it. Mm, it's, it's, it's brighter. It's, 
it's got this kind of like juicy feeling to it, like plum or like strawberry or something like that. It's beautiful. It's really nice. And it's still satisfying, but it's, it's bright and uh, childlike and playful for sure. And the performance wise, it is beast mode. <laughs> it is not childlike in that department at all. It really projects, it really lasts all day into the next day. This is a gorgeous cotton candy. If you're like done with the pink sugar and the whole licorice syrupy thing, this is a really fun, bright, easy cotton candy. So that is Cotton Candy de Dua. This next one is in here because it's just so darn weird, but it has cotton candy, so I have to talk about it. And it is Carolina Herrera's 212 Sexy, which came out in 2005, which granted was a weird time. It has top notes of bergamot, mandarin, and pink pepper. It has middle notes of rose, gardenia, cotton candy, and pelargonium. <laughs> and it has base notes of violet, sandalwood, vanilla, patchouli, caramel, and white musk. And on my skin, this is a very peppery, perfumey, grapefruit cotton candy, if you can imagine that. It's citrusy. It's, it's like typical generic perfume with some spice thrown in there. And the dry down, it's just like a very, very perfumey cotton candy. It has this kind of interesting green note in it. So it's not overly sweet. It's like a fresh scent with citrus and spice and pepper with just like that hint of cotton candy to sweeten it up. So it's not exactly a cotton candy forward perfume, but you do get it in the background. It's, it's interesting. I can't say it's a love for me, but I'm gonna keep playing with it because it is so different. But yeah, that pe pepperiness really does stick with it. So if you want something that's indulgent and sweet, but a little unique, like a, like a little mysterious, this definitely fits that bill. So this is Carolina Herrera's 212 Sexy. This second to last one may come as a surprise. There's not actually a cotton candy note in it, but it is the new 2021 Miss Dior. And yes, I did a flash review of this, so I'll link that below if you want some more detail. But this just really has a resounding cotton candy note to my nose and on my skin. So the top notes of this are iris, peony, and lily of the valley. The middle notes are rose, peach, and apricot. And the base notes are vanilla, tonka bean, musk, benzoin, and sandalwood. And to answer your first question, it's really different from the original 2017 version. That one's really beautiful and it's sweet but it has patchouli and depth and it's got these beautiful florals in it like rose this doesn't really have much of that this on my skin at the first spray smells like bubble gum and florals so it's already gone into like candy territory which is a departure from the original and the dry down i get sweet peach and apricot notes and this juicy cotton candy so it's like a peachy cotton candy spun sugar very sweet scent it has a hint of that patchouli in it, but it's really in the background. The performance on this is absolutely awesome. It is a phenomenal performer. Obviously, it has amazing ingredients in it. It is a Dior. Mm. But let me know if you get any of that, like, kind of cotton candy vibe in here. I'm just really curious. Um, it still has the rose of the original, but it's a totally different kind of younger smelling rose to me. So, yeah, this feels like it's trying to be... Um, more like the really overly sweet perfumes that are more popular today, which makes sense. They're selling, so I totally get it. And it, it is still fantastic. So that is the Miss Dior 2021 Eau de Parfum. I've truly saved my very favorite for last because you just can't beat a girl on. And that is La Petite Robe Noir Intense Happy Dance. This is definitely one of my very favorite perfumes. I have decanted for people and I'm like, no more decanting because I'm running low, ladies. All right, so we have top notes of blueberry, cotton candy, raspberry, cassis, and bergamot. Middle notes of Bulgarian rose, orange blossom, and jasmine. And base notes of vanilla patchouli, sandalwood, and white musk. And this is pretty linear. It doesn't develop much on my skin, but it doesn't have to because it's gorgeous. It is a syrupy, melted blueberry cotton candy with some musk in there. It is rich and beautiful and satisfying and decadent and syrupy and sweet and all those good things. But there's just something in here that just is different. It just, it isn't a children's perfume. It is, not that any of them really are, but like, you know, they're not, it's not like necessarily youthful. It feels like a grown up cotton candy and not just because of the blueberry. I think it's the rose coming in that's just like giving it a little bit of oomph, like a little something extra. 
Um, but the performance is beast mode. It performs beautifully all day, projects. It's all around me. I absolutely adore it. And of course the bottle is gorgeous. Mm, there's just nothing quite like it. So this is La Petite Robe Noir Intense by the House of Guerlain. Well, that was way too much fun because I love cotton candy as a note and I'm a grown woman and I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> so let me know which of these you've tried or what your favorite cotton candy inspired perfume is. It's been great to have you here. I hope you have a very beautiful day.